Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. So today we are going over Ender Pearl elevators because I did end up getting a request on the last video to see exactly how these Ender Pearl elevators work, how I built mine over at the cow farm and all that. So I figured I set up some demonstrations here, but first we're going to go over and take a look at the other cow farm. Elevator one. This is the first one I came up with. Has some redstone showing, which I don't like. It's not the most compact, but I like it because it's kind of it's sleek and it's only like three wide here. That's one benefit of this one. The other one's more wide in the other direction. So this one's more flat, but it does show some redstone, which is why I don't like it because I feel that that removes some flexibility from it. So over here, we don't show any redstone, and I've got two designs that use a trap door, and this one actually uses a sticky piston with a block, and that's why it's one taller. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, this is a very basic one. It's extremely compact, however, it has no T flip-flop in it. So with this one, well, it is a lot more compact and easy to build. You can see you'll end up, if you don't get off quickly, you will fall. So if you walk off quick, you're fine. Otherwise, you will fall quickly. So if you're fine with having no time at all to get off pretty much, then that one will work for you very well, and it will save you a lot of building and everything. And it seems that this T flip-flop has gotten reversed, so I need to reset that really quick. Oh, by the way, keep in mind all of these T flip flops are supercharged, which means that it's your basic piston T flip flop here with a inverter hooked into it, and that causes it to activate immediately instead of activating when the pulse goes off. And if you don't supercharge it, then you will fall and then it will activate and that doesn't help you very much. So I'll explain that all in more depth after we go over everything. But here you can see, go up, as close as below us, and this one stays until we take this step. When we take this step, we hit that tripwire and it resets the T flip-flop. And normally we'd walk on our way and we'd drop down and this thing would be ready to go the next time we came by. And here's my, here's this last one I built, which is my favorite, just because it shows no sign of it really existing whatsoever, aside from the tripwire. See, it just looks like flat ground there, and normally you would reset that. I don't know why that didn't happen there. Let's try this again. I don't know, it might be a delay thing, but... Yeah, I, I like this design better just because of that, aside from the piston and some slight adjustments. It's basically the exact same design as the second one, just for a piston. So let's run through how this all works. I'm not going to bother building these, since they're kind of annoying to build, but they're not that complex. And also, they're pretty flexible on how you can build them. You might have to adjust them based on how much space you have. But basically here... You want to start with a basic template at all times, which is however high up you want, then a trap door, then two space, then one space. Uh, these do have to be some kind of transparent block. They have to be like glowstone or glass or a double s or just a regular slab. They have to be something that is the game considers transparent or air, because otherwise. Let's look at this. If you put a regular block here, this tripwire will not register. Because apparently tripwires have to be on either all transparent blocks or all solid blocks. So if you have an air pocket, it will screw up the whole tripwire. It's kind of weird physics. I wish they would change that. But for now, these do have to be transparent blocks. But anyway, so you want to start with your basic base. If you want a one block spacing from the tripwire if you're using a trap door. If you're using a piston with a solid block, then you need a two block spacing before the piston, I believe. Yeah, that's correct. 
So you need two blocks and then the tripwire. And now what you want to do is on this design without the T flip flop, you would run a torch on the back of the either side, doesn't matter. And then that would power redstone one down. And then there's a repeater right there. And that repeater goes into a block which has that trap door on it. So next is our slightly more complicated T flip flop design. A T flip flop, by the way, if you don't know, is a switch that every time you power it, it toggles between on and off. It's uh, like an RS NOR latch, except you only have one input. So anyway, this one has a torch on top of it, so it will be powered. And that will power this line, or it will unpower this line, which will cause these pistons to shift every time. Just watch the pistons. See, every time that happens, these will shift. When it's here, it won't do anything. But when the block is over here, a redstone torch will be running power through it, which causes this line to get powered. And this line points into a block that has this trap door on it. So every time you do this, the piston will, sw will shift, and this will switch between on and off. And finally, our piston design. Exact same thing here with the T-flip-flop. The only difference is this wire run right here and the one extra block of height that adjusts the wire slightly. But there really is not much difference in these designs and I just like this one a lot better because it does not show any trap doors. And really the trip wire would not be too noticeable, especially if it was higher up. Like if you had a 20 or so high one of these. I'm not sure what the exact height is on an ender pearl throw. But that is the limit of how high you can make these elevators. That's the one limitation. Although I could see somehow design an easy system to chain a bunch of these together. Maybe having like a piston pusher system to push yourself back and forth. So you could just throw ender pearls up every couple seconds to go high distances fast. But that was just my quick little run through here of how these ender pearl elevators work. Just to fulfill that request there. Hopefully that helped. If you've got any more questions, just go ahead and ask. And until next time, see ya.